Hey everybody, it's William. Welcome back to Silverstone. Today we're going to be driving the Mercedes AMG GT3. Um, putting together a race setup for you guys. I've been working off of the uh, aggressive preset. That's what I've been driving. Um, honestly, it feels very stable, the aggressive preset, but uh, it does have quite a bit of understeer. I feel like I'm really giving up a lot of time in the um, fast corners specifically just with uh, entry understeer and uh, also kind of a little bit of, um, of just a lazy feeling through the uh, slow speed corners. I'm going to see if I can try and get that uh, the car a little bit more nimble on the front end without uh, sacrificing anything else. been able to do about mid 59s on the aggressive uh, preset. So we're going to see if we can get that down into the uh, low, low 58s or maybe even be the first car to crack into the 57s, but I am not going to hold my breath. Uh, maybe someone out there that's faster than me can get into the 57s and I can feel accomplished that way. So um, we're going to have the hot lap and then uh, I will be back to talk over the setup um, to uh, give you guys some insight into the changes and also... Uh, some adjustability to maybe tweak it to uh, better suit your style. So I'll, uh, I'll be back with you guys for the setup. Enjoy the hot lap. Okay everyone, that was a lap around Silverstone in the Mercedes AMG GT3. We managed a 158.197 um, on the aggressive preset. Like I said, I was doing uh, mid 59s, uh, 59.5s, so it's about the best I got really on the aggressive preset. Um, some of that is going to be just spending more time in the car and uh, some of it also definitely from the setup in my opinion. So. Um, first lap was actually our fastest, uh, not the greatest final sector. I had traction control really, really uh, kick in. Um, just struggling for a little bit of grip out of the slow speed corners. Uh, it also doesn't help that I have uh, very little throttle control whenever it comes to situations like that. So I moved it to TC1 for lap two and three. And um, ultimately I think it's faster. Um, you can see this um, last sector on uh, the second lap was, uh, you know, about half a tenth faster or so, but I just, you know, putting together the entire lap. I also noticed as um, as the runs go on, this wasn't the only run I did, this is just uh, what I decided to record. As the runs go on, uh, you get faster and faster through sector one. Um, you can maintain sector two 
I didn't do a great job of that here, but you definitely can. And then sector three is kind of where you fall off as you, um, at least for me anyways, it seemed like it was more and more important to have that throttle control out of the slow speed corners. And uh, that is what I really need to work on as a driver. Um, but yeah, anyways, that it, that's it right there, 158.197. We'll go ahead and get into the setup now. Um, so over the aggressive preset, we didn't really do much here, just increased the uh, camber uh, down to negative 3.9. Um, didn't touch it on the rear, but we did increase the rear toe. Uh, just a little bit more stability and uh, trying, to, trying to get it to launch out of the corners a little bit better. Um, onto the electronics, like I said, I started, my fastest lap was on two and two. Um, but ultimately, I think you're gonna be better off running less traction control if you can manage it with your right foot. Um, like I said, that's what I need to work on as a driver. Uh, really being, uh, it's mostly pedal stuff for me, so a little bit um, more feel for the brake pedal and a little bit more feel on the throttle pedal. Um, but yeah, uh, 38 liters is what I did that run with. Uh, it's actually, I don't know what I just did there, click something. Um, it's, it's actually a pretty, pretty high fuel burn per lap um, from what I've seen. Not surprising though. Um, big old engine on the Mercedes. I actually, I remember if this one's, this one's definitely not got the twin turbochargers on. It doesn't sound like it anyways, but the uh, um, suspension uh, setup here, stiff, uh, stiffened the wheel rates all around. Um, didn't touch the front anti-roll bar. It actually feels pretty darn good, uh, both in turn in and not too much understeer and also in these slower speed corners. The front of the car feels really good now. That's where it was understeering really bad for me. It, was, it just felt like the front was um, not even connected to the car. I don't, I don't really know how to explain it, but on the rear, we, um, like I said, we stiffened it up quite a bit, which kind of has to do with the aero changes we made. But uh, we also reduced the rear anti-roll bar and increased the uh, preload on the rear uh, just a few. Uh, I think it was. It started at uh, 30, and we're up to 50, and we dropped the rear anti-roll bar by two. Again, um, dropping the rear anti-roll bar one, we increased the wheel rate. So um, you you don't necessarily want to keep the anti-roll bar super stiff with uh, increasing uh, the wheel rate. Normally, if you decrease the wheel rate, you might want to increase the anti-roll bar. Just kind of the way that that works and corresponds with each other. Um, the front of the car just felt really good. I didn't feel like I needed to change anything. And the increased preload, um, specifically into the um, uh, higher speed, um, like heavy, heavy braking zones where you've kind of got to turn the car in while still braking, uh, just didn't have a whole lot of stability on the rear. And outside of just throwing more aero on it or doing a ride height change or something, uh, I wanted a little bit more stability but I also didn't want to uh, kill the drive off of the corners with just massive oversteer. So just a couple clicks actually did it. Uh, I think it was on 30, like I said, up to 50. If you're getting a little bit more um, instability on turn in or something like that, you can try increasing it just a little bit more. Just be wary, it might, um, it might uh, kind of hurt your drive out of the slower speed corners. Um, onto the dampers, not much different here either. I think uh, mostly fast bump. Um, just to adjust for this, the uh, wheel rates and also uh, I think I increased the rebound on the rear a little bit once again to kind of try and give a little more stability. Decrease the bump on the front. Um, uh, stiffer wheel rates and want to actually set the weight around the way I wanted it to. It's just playing with the balance. Uh, nothing too crazy there though. And then onto the arrow. So I lowered the front a little bit more. Um, you've got a lot of aero to play with on the Mercedes, which is kind of nice because I think you need it. Um, since we're at Silverstone and I've, I've basically found that aero is uh, very, very, very good around here, just throw on more and more aero. Um, I lowered the front and increased the front splitter, but then um, we added more rear wing, and just with that, uh, the rear ride height was at like 75 millimeters. Just with that, the car actually, it uh, it didn't really have that great of a balance, so wound up 
increasing the rear ride height to about 80 and I think I was running eight wing at the time um, and the car rotates really really nice on uh, that setup but uh, I feel like it's it's a little bit too uh, aggressive um, so I bumped it up to 10 wing and that basically took care of my problem um, there so if you want a little bit more rotation out of it a little bit more um, um, more of an agile kind of pointy front end you can take some of this wing out um, alternatively you still have splitter to add on the front if you like this balance but you just want to get a little bit more uh, pointiness on the nose you can add some more splitter for sure this is basically what I would play with to uh, really affect the majority of the balance you're going to feel around this track uh, the slow speed stuff is more mechanical grip but a lot of the corners around here, you're you're relying on the arrow of the car. So uh, just keep in mind, you know, if the if the car feels like it's understeering, you can affect that both with the front and the rear. So understeer, um, like on entry, you can definitely add more front splitter, but you can also take off some rear wing, and that might solve your problem better. Or you can try increasing the ride height a little bit more, or decreasing depending on what you're going for. So. Um, anyways, guys, that's basically it with the setup. I hope you've enjoyed this one. If you give it a shot, let us know how you get on with it in the comments below, as always. And, uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for listening to all this. Hopefully this helps somebody out there. Um, that's the name of the game anyways. Uh, until I drive one of these again, I guess I'll, uh, I'll catch you on the next one.